Well, welcome guys. Uh, welcome to uh, Shadespire. Uh, we're currently underground in the catacombs of uh, Shadespire, uh, the ruined city. It was once a great centre of academia and learning, uh, but has now been destroyed by the gash and his jealousy. I know, right? So it, looks, it looks ghostly and unreal, right? Yeah. Um, it attracts war bands of fighters uh, into the catacombs who try and seek fame, fortune and, of course, glory. And in fact, glory is what we're fighting over today. Okay. For the player who has the most glory tokens at the end of the game will be the winner. Cool. You score glory tokens by killing enemy miniatures and also by scoring objective points, which we'll go through in a second. The okay. first thing we need to do is uh, draw some cards. So these cards here is uh, a lot of what Shades Bar is all about. You have two decks available to each player. The silver deck is the silver is the power deck, okay. uh, and the gold deck is the objective deck. The power deck lets you do crazy upgrades and surprise trips and things to try and uh, fool, fool your opponent and get one over on him. Okay. The objective deck, it's pretty obvious, is how you score more glory points. Okay. I need you guys to draw five of those and three of those. Okay. Go for it. Now, normally in a game of Shade Spire, these cards are laid out, uh, in, sorry, secret in your hand, but uh, we're going to lay them out today so uh, we can see what's going on. Alright. So so three of those. Three of those. All of them? Uh, yeah, just lay them out in front there. Right. Okay, so we've got the cards out in front of us. I'm going to go through what they mean later on. Okay. Uh, the first thing you need to look at is your miniatures on the table. Now, Shade Spire is a, is a bit of a mashup between a board game, uh, a miniatures war game, and a card game. Cool. Uh, the miniatures on the board, you have two war bands. Over here we have the Corn Bloodbound, brutal warriors from the north who love nothing more than killing people and drinking their blood. And on the left here we have the Stormcast Eternals, they are Sigmar's chosen warriors sent down to uh, the mortal realms to defeat Chaos. Nice. The war bands are preset by the game. So if okay. you have a Stormcast Eternal war band, those are the exact three models you will use in the game. And same for the Corn Bloodbound, and same for the other factions we'll bring out in the future. They have the exact models you use. The reason for that is because they directly correspond to a card over here. You see you guys have got character cards that directly respond to each miniature. For example, Garrett Gorbeard here, the leader of the uh, Corn Bloodbound Warband, is this fellow here. And Severin Stormheart, uh, Steelheart, sorry, uh, the leader of the Stormcast Eternals, is this guy here. All right, the customization of the game, where you get to uh, do what you want with it, uh, is where you customize your deck. There'll be loads of other cards available. These are even starter decks from the main box game today, uh, but there will be other cards uh, available in the future. All right, so without any more ado, let's, uh, let's get started. First of all, we're going to use some of these crazy dice over here uh, to try and roll T goes first. Okay. I'll go through what all the symbols mean later on, but right now we're looking to see the player gets the most critical results, gets to go first. Okay. Go for it. Uh, roll, all, roll all four, yeah. Uh, all the black and white dice are the same. Oh, okay. uh, Jeremy's got one, Brian's got one. Okay, roll again, guys. This is often the longest phase in the game. <laughs> uh, one for Brian. Okay, so Brian's going to get to go first. All Great. Right. Cool. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is going to activate a miniature. You have uh, four activations here, okay. and one turn is both of you activating four times. Okay. There will be three turns in the game, and at the end of the third turn, whoever has the most glory wins the game. Gotcha. When you activate a miniature, you simply flip it over, and you go, I'm moving this guy. Now, you can do one of four things when you activate a miniature. The first thing you can do is move. Each model can move up to the movement profile on their card, the bottom left of the card down here. You'll notice that the Stormcast Eternals are movement three, mm. but the Bloodbound are mostly movement four for their lighter armoured and they're a bit quicker. Uh, the second thing you can do uh, is you can fight. If you are a certain number of hexes away from the enemy, you can fight. Uh, the black box here is your attack profile. The left hand side is the, uh, it's the range of the attack. Most of the attacks are one hex, meaning you have to be adjacent to the fighter to hit them. Yep. Uh, but actually over here we have one fighter who has an axe on a chain, there he is, who has a range 2 attack. Okay. There's also other upgrades later on that give you range attacks, but we'll come to those later on. The third thing you can do is go on guard. Going on guard means you put your shield up, get ready to take a beating, uh, but, and your defensive uh, uh, powers go up by a little bit, so it's great if you're about to be hit. Gotcha. And the last thing you can do, and the most fun, uh, is charge. A charge action is a move followed by an attack action. Okay. If you it sounds great, you might think, well, why not, wouldn't I do that all the time? If you do a charge, we put this little marker next to your miniature, and that model is then locked for the rest of the turn. It can't do anything else, move, guard, nothing. Okay. Until we've gone through all four activations, we start turn two, then the token comes off, and you can activate again. Right. So, Brian, you've won the first, uh, first roll off for the turn. What do you want to do first? I'm going to charge and tackle them. Absolutely. So, Angra yep. Bryce is going to go for it. Uh, so, that's, that's Severin Steelheart, you'll leave oh, over I'm here. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's absolutely fine. No, it's cool, aren't you? Uh, so we put a little charge mark next to him, and he's going to go and yeah, deliver absolutely. the smack. He's going straight in for the leader as well, no oh, yeah. about. Excellent work. <laughs> okay, 
Uh, you'll notice as well, actually, uh, you've got a special objective card over here that says if you kill the enemy leader, you get a glory point straight away. Oh, so nice. that's pretty much worth doing. Ouch. Let's do an attack then, let's see how this works. Is there anything here that would help? Or are we just it not... will, but we'll come to those in a second. Oh, okay. There's a special dice uh, card phase we come to in a, in a oh, second. Okay, gotcha. Now these are special attack dice we use uh, to determine how fights work in Shades Play. Okay. There's lots of different symbols on them. Uh, the one you're most interested in, Brian, is the Big Hammer. The Big Hammer represents a smash attack. It's quite a focused attack done by a skilled warrior. There's two smash facings on the dice. Awesome. The other one you see here is a sword. They're called Fury or Slash Attacks. They represent attacks being done by wild warriors who are just lashing out. As a result, there's only one of them on the dice, so they're less accurate. Okay. These crazy eye symbols represent, su represent support in the game. So if you're supported by a friendly fighter, uh, you get support. And if you're supported by two friendly fighters, that one works as well. And of course, the big fat one we all want is the critical result. That's always good. Gotcha. You'll get understand how that works as we go along, but for now, let's have a look at Sever uh, Severin Steelheart's attack card. So on the black box there, you can see that on the left is the range of the attack, which is one. Uh, you have uh, this number in the middle is two, that's how many attack dice you're going to roll, two duck dice, and uh, the little symbol, the hammer, is what you need to roll. What you're looking to do, Brian, is to gain more successes in attack than Jeremy gets in defense. If you win the fight, you'll deal your damage to the enemy fighter. So, roll those two dice, uh, you're looking for hammers and or criticals. So, great, so that, that's a fail for now, but that hammer is a success. Awesome. Jeremy, you're looking to try and defend yourself. Let's have a look at Garrett Gorbid's card. There he is. Okay. Now, Garrett Gorbid, at the bottom, has a one in the middle here. That represents his defense dice. That also, uh, the little symbol there, the arrow, means he needs a dodge. Now, the difference here on the defense dice, which are the black dice, uh, the dodge has one facing on the dice, uh, because it's, it's quite a difficult thing to do, yeah. whereas the shield, which is what the Stormcast Eternals use to defend themselves, has two facings. Therefore, Stormcast Eternals are better at defending yeah. and attacking which is why they have three minutes instead of five. Gotcha. Makes That's sense? really cool that they do right. that, where they use dodge because they don't use any like kind of armor. That's yeah. exactly right, like yeah. Uh, so, what you need to do is you need to roll that dice there. Okay. A dodge result or a critical result will cancel out the hammer. Awesome. Fail to roll either, you'll take damage. All right. I'll do both. <laughs> well, it's a fail, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, so you do take the damage. We take two of these damage markers here. We place them on Garrett Gorbid's card as such. Rewind a little bit here. <laughs> Severin Steelheart has three damage on his card. There we go. That's the, what the little explosion marker means. We've got three markers on. He's still alive though, but That's just about hanging on. Very close. There we go. That's the end of your first activation. Okay. And now we go into the power phase. Okay. The power phase is when we're going to use these cards in front of you to try and do cool, crazy tricks uh, to try and beat each other up. Now, there's two different types of power cards, and they're determined by the top left hand corner of each of the cards. Okay. If your card has a uh, a, a knife on it or a dagger, it's called a ploy. These are cool free things you get to play. If it has a cogs or mechanical uh, wheels on the top left hand corner, they're called an upgrade. And those cards are permanent upgrades that you can place on your cards. For example, um, there's one over here that will give, uh, give you a special lightning blast attack, which is quite cool. If you, if you use that, you put it on the card and it stays there for the rest of the game. Nice. The catch being, using the ones with the cogs on costs you a glory point. So you have to have glory first before you can use those. Gotcha. When you earn a glory later on in the game, when you kill a model or a completed objective, you'll put a glory point down, uh, and if you use one of those cards, you simply flip it over. You still have the victory point at the end of the game, uh, okay. so there's no disadvantage in doing oh, so. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. You haven't got a choice between doing... Yeah. Okay, so Brian, it's your uh, uh, power phase right now. Would you like to use any of your cards? You haven't got any glory right now, so the cog one's probably out of the question. So I can only pick one to put down? You can pick one now. Yeah. Then Jeremy will have his turn to respond and then we'll go back and forth in this power phase until you both pass. Oh, okay. At which point, Jeremy, it'll be your first activation, you'll go through a model, move, fight, whatever you want to do with it, and it'll be your power phase response. Okay. Something to bear in mind with the cards as well, some of the cards will say something along the lines of, in the next activation. Yep. That means the next activation, not your next activation. So if you play a card right now that says, plus one damage dice in the next activation, well, Jeremy will get the bonus. <laughs> So, oh, does that make get, sense? Oh, so yeah. you want to play the card that says plus one damage in the next activation in Jeremy's power phase when you're about to attack. Gotcha. Make sense? Okay. Cool. Yep. All right, so, is there anything you'd like to say? I have a question. Yeah. If that guy's locked, can I play cards on him? You can still play cards on him, yes. So I could put him in guard? If you wanted to, yeah. That's the only way you could do it, yeah. Because I can't do anything else with him, so throwing him in guard would be good. Idea. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. play the card. Right. Cool, uh, we'll do that. Heroic guard goes down. We place the guard token here. Put it next to uh, put it next to Severin Steelheart. Now the guard token means that uh, either the shield or the dodge result will help in defence oh. rather than just the shield. Nice. 
So it's great for Stormcast Eternals because they get, they get plus one facing on the defense dice. It's even better for Corn yeah. because you get plus two facing on the dice. Awesome. Uh, so I think I'm going to go with Healing Potion since my guy great shout, yeah. very low. <laughs> the Healing Potion uh, card lets you roll a defense dice. Okay. If you roll a shield or a critical, uh, you gain two uh, uh, health points back. If you, only, if you don't, you gain one back. Awesome, yeah. So at least you get something. You get something, yeah. yeah. That's good. Uh, you failed, because so you gain I'm one health point back. Because I'm going to fail again anyway. So, <laughs> so, so we remove one. one. And it goes. We then discard cool. the card over here. Cool. Uh, back to you, Bri. Do you want anything you want to do at all? You've got the Confusion card there, which helps switch two adjacent fighters. Uh, that might be well, useful, for example, if one of you is trying to hold an objective and you can move him off it, for example. Or you can put a fighter into a position where you Jason can hit him. Yeah, literally okay. oh, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, You've got the Tireless Assault card, and that is uh, if you um, attempt an attack and it fails, as in no hits get through, you can just have another go. Now, is that something they put down? It says a reaction. That's an device. instantaneous card that happens the second, so it happens outside the power phase. Okay. So as okay. soon as you fail an assault, it goes down. Oh, okay. Which is a pretty That's good card. Okay. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else I can do. Okay, uh, Jeremy, anything you'd like to cast? Uh, everything else is a cog, so I'm good. Oh, fair enough. Okay, so you better do some killing then. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, uh, in that case, it's end of the power phase, and it's over to Jeremy's turn. Flip okay. an activation token. Do we draw back up at all or no? No. Okay. So you'll get to draw back up uh, to the original hand in the end phase once you've both had four activations. Okay. So it's worth bearing that in mind so you don't just spend all your cards at once. You've gotcha. got to last four turns for it. All right, so I'll flip this guy over. Yep. And uh, so I see he has two attacks. Does it mean you can pick one? You can pick one, yeah. You've got one ranged attack that does one damage, or one up close damage, one that does two. Okay. Of and, course. Uh, how much health does he have? Four? Uh, Severin Steelheart currently four. has four health, yeah. Four. All right. Um, I might as well go with the biggest, so. Uh, yeah, absolutely. What is Sex? Which one's he? Sex, the guy with a huge axe over his head, this guy here. Oh, this guy right here. And he has four move, one, two, three, four. Sounds great. That's good to me, or maybe I'll go around the other way. One, two, three, four, yeah. Uh, these don't block uh, movement, you can oh, move over don't? them if you want oh, to. Okay. No problem. Perfect. Then I'm gonna give him a little flank then. Excellent work, okay. okay. So uh, let's have a look at Sayek's card here. Uh, Sayek has two attacks, needing the hammer result. Okay. Now, because he. The hammer result will work, obviously, we know that from the card. Yep. We know the critical result will work, great. But also, because you've got one friend supporting you, the single support awesome. die facing will also be a success. It doesn't change the number of dice you roll, it yeah. just means you get more chance of being a success. Awesome. So, so it's go for it. two die because of that. That's right. And then I just need a one success. Oh, the more the better. Excellent work. Oh, so, we here we go. <laughs> That's it's pretty, better. pretty grim. Now, <laughs> Severin Steelheart has one dice needing a shield. So grab yourself a dice. But he is in defense, so. Oh, the you're dodge absolutely right, so he needs work. the dodge or the shield, you're correct. So, um, you may still be able to. However, <laughs> um, the dodge or the shield will get rid of this. Only a critical will get rid of this. Okay. Fails. Okay. So, a couple of things happen here. So, first of all, uh, that blocks out that one, but the critical is still there, okay. which means you take the damage. Bloody Sex Axe does a mighty three damage, so we take three uh, damage tokens and put them on Steelheart. So the crit doesn't do any more damage, it's just harder no, to block. No, it's just harder to block, absolutely awesome. right. Very um, good. Next up, there's something else quite cool about these cards as well. You'll notice that each of the cards have a, se a special golden box on them. Yep. This is a consequence by which if you meet, your fighter becomes inspired. If an inspired fighter hits that consequence, they flip the card over and they get extra cool special rules. Uh, the Stormcast Eternal get better attacks and most of the time, uh, sorry, defense, sorry, and most of the time the corn guys get a better attack and they get faster as well. The consequence for the, uh, for the corn bloodbound is if at any point there are three models dead on the board, any models from either side, yep. uh, you all go inspired at the same time. Thanks. The consequence for all the Stormcast Eternals is if you roll a shield or a critical in defense, whether it's successful or not, that individual fighter goes inspired. Well, you oh. did roll a shield here. So Severin Steelheart flips his card round and gets better. Uh oh. <laughs> so he has a quite cool little option here. First of all, the big op uh, thing here is he goes to two defense, which is great. Yeah. Uh, he also has a special attack called Mighty Swing, whereby he can attack every model he's in contact with, but with a slightly less, uh, less, less power. Okay. Which is great. Wow. At least but he's locked for now. <laughs> he's locked for now, yeah. Okay, so uh, Jeremy, that's your activation done. It's time for your power phase. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to do? Um, uh, I don't think I have any uh, glory still no. either, so uh, yeah, okay. this says to hold objective one. What's the... Uh... So, absolutely, so, holding an objective, you literally need to be on an objective like so, okay. uh, so and at the end phase. Okay. Um, so if you... Uh, yeah, so being so that's there, number can... one, because that's the one on it. Bingo, yeah. Gotcha. You've, you've gained before, right? <laughs> <laughs> A little bit. Okay. Okay. There, so. is, there is one thing I should say as well, actually, um, yeah. in that... Um, uh, before the before the uh, game uh, begins, when you draw your first hand, if you wanted to, 
you could do a mulligan and replace the entire hand. And seeing as it's a demo game, yeah. I'm more than happy to let you do that now if you want to. Or uh, do you want to keep what you've got? Sure, why don't we get rid of two and see if we get anything. Well, it's, more. it's your whole hand or none. Oh, whole, yeah, sure. Go That's for fine. it. There you go. are all gears. See if we find something more exciting. Yeah, well, that, that normally Four. would happen at the start, so, but let's make the game a bit more exciting. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay, cool. And he's got some more. Great, he's got some stuff he can do. All right. Okay, so it's your phone phase now, and bearing in mind you're about to um, yeah. have. You're about to receive an attack. Yeah. So don't go boosting well, that'll the That'll be a good one to save for next round. Bingo, yeah. So, we'll be good. Uh, okay, um, Brian, back. anything you'd like to do? Uh, I guess we'll just move in with this. So you uh, it's, your, it's your power phase. Oh, yeah. power phase? Yeah, power phase. Uh, no, there's, there's nothing I have. No? What's the Valiant attack do? Any fighters cannot support the target. Oh, that's pretty cool. So uh, that, that means basically, so enemy forces try to get defensive support as well. So for example, if if you're attacking, this guy, uh, this guy was attacking here, yeah. and he was defending, well, that would be a support defense as well. Um, the Valiant attack card means that the person you're fighting has to take you one-on-one, -on -one and they therefore can't use the defensive support. Nice. Oh, that's, oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, I'll use that then. You want to do that? Yeah. Go for it, man. Where's, uh, where, so, play that now. Yeah. That's down. You don't have to, add to add, uh, allocate it to a model, it just says the next uh, attack you Okay, does. so we're right here. Great. Over to you. Anything you'd like to do? Uh, I'm good for now. Okay. Uh, great, so back to you, Brian. Anything you'd like to do? Done? Yeah. Cool. Double pass, and it's over to you, Brian's activation team. Now I can either just move in, or yep. I can charge to attack. So you can do, yeah, you can move into here using one activation, or you can charge uh, and fight at the same time. Of course, if you charge, um, that's all that guy can yeah. do. There's no limit to how many um, activations charge. you can use on one model, so if you wanted to, you could spend all four activations on one miniature. So. If you have lots of activations left and a guy locked, you might want to move this guy in now, yeah. stop, don't do anything else, and then in, later on, attack twice. Okay. But at the same time, that guy might move away in that time. Right. So it's up Don't to you. That. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Flip one. Yep. Great. Okay. So you're, uh, I assume you're, you're going to try and kill the leader here. I get, place a charge marker next to uh, Oberon there. Oh, no, I was just moving. Just, oh, I was just moving. moving? Yeah. Oh, that's a bold move. Over on the bold, earning his name there. Uh, okay, uh, so that's your move done. It's time for your power phase. Anything you'd like to do? I'm going to use this gonna confusion, use confusion card, and I'm going to switch these two. Go for it. That's nice. So the leader's not in the middle taking the fight anymore. Great. When does this go away? It will go away at the end phase. The end phase is yeah. okay. Cool. All right, uh, then it's time for your turn, Jeremy. Cool. Uh, so I will be playing uh, Corn Calls. Nice. Uh, roll one extra attack die for your first attack action in the next activation. Okay, cool. So the next fight you do, you'll be better. All right. Back over here. Anything you'd like to try and play? No. No? Okay, back to you, Jeremy. Anything you'd like to play? No, nope, I'm good. Cool. It's double, uh, double pass, so off you go. It's your next activation. All right. So flip this guy over. What's the plan? I'm going to see if I can't finish off your leader there. He has one health left. He does only have one health left. He's got a lot of defense, but uh, it's worth a shot. Go for it. So we'll go in with the leader who's already adjacent. Yeah, sure. Okay, so the leader uh, gets... Uh, uh, he? Here he is. It's right here. He's, he's wounded himself. He's got yep. two uh, two dice needing hammers. Okay, but I get an extra because I did the. Now, uh, so if you if you go for him, yep. you'll just need hammers and criticals. If you go for him, you'll get the support from this guy. So hammers, criticals, and a support. That's true. But he's wounded. Yeah, he's wounded, and I got the uh, corn call, so I'm going with the three die. So that's a really good move using that confusion card, because if the leader was there, and you hit the leader there, you've got support. So confusion meant that you haven't got supports on the Even dice. Even more defense. Yeah. So how does this work though? If enemy fighters cannot support. Yeah, that's... Oh, you played it, didn't you? Yeah, you're yeah. right. It would have worked anyway. So there you go. So it would have made doubly sure that he's on his own. Yeah. Oh, okay. Cool. But uh, I'm going straight for the leader. Try and take him out. If he had gone for over on the bold in the middle, that support wouldn't have worked because of the variant attack card. Gotcha. All right. Here we go. Oh, he's only got two dice, is Gareth? Uh, I used the... Uh, oh, so he did. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh -oh. so, but unfortunately, he's rolled three swords. Uh, Garrett needs uh, hammers. Oh, so it's a triple fail. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh, so we discard the cards because they won't work for the next activation. All right. Uh, that's a shame. Uh, yep. It's your power phase. Anything you'd like to do? Um, no, so, uh, so when it says two fighters, I can switch enemy Any two fighters. Uh, friendly, oh, right. enemies, anything. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe I'll just switch them right back into place. <laughs> nice, fair enough, yep. Get back in there, get that support for next time. Sounds good. Uh, anything for you, Brian? Anything you'd like to play? It's the assault no. one, dude. The Tars assault one's a reaction to whenever oh, he right. tries to fight and fails, he gets another yeah. go. Yeah, gotcha. So you can, yeah. Okay, so that's Both it, uh, and no power. So, Ryan, so have your third activation. Yeah. And over right. on the bolt attack is uh, three damage with his massive hammer. So uh, you'll kill that leader in one hit. So we'll flip 
Yeah. Go for it. Uh, he has two attacks, two needing base. hammers. Or criticals. That's a hammer, so that's one, uh, one success. Uh, now, over here, you have one defense dice. Right, and needing a, uh, a dodge or a critical will do the work here. I'll be fine, I'll be fine. And, oh, oh, it's a shield, it's a fail. Oh, As a result, no. Garrett Gorbeard takes a massive three damage from Oberon's hammer, okay. and that has obliterated him to death. Uh -oh. So uh, take the model off, put the bottom of the card over here, so we remember. Straight away, you get a glory point for killing, for killing an enemy model. You get one glory point every time you kill an enemy model. Yep. It will also mean in the end phase later on, Slayer of Tyrants will activate, you'll get a glory point then as well. But for now you've got one, which is pretty cool. cool. Now you've done your activation, it's time then for your uh, power phase. And of course now you've got a glory points, you could probably use one of those upgrades if you wanted to. Yeah. So does it, does it take a glory point to place that on someone? That's right. You just use no, you could use oh, a glory point, cool. that upgrade goes on the card, and then it becomes, so what is it, what is it he's got there? It's what? a lightning blast. When you make a critical hit, the spider also inflicts one damage on enemy fighters adjacent to the target's hex. Nice. That's why it goes. So it explodes in a lightning every time it hits someone with it. Do they ever roll defense or is it just instant damage? Uh, this uh, also inflicts one damage. It just says inflicts damage. Ooh, that's, strong. that's pretty horrible, isn't it? Yeah. So you want to use that? Yeah, I mean, you can't really block lightning, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. Cool. Flip the glory token over and place it. Now it's restricted to Oberon, so it has to go on this guy here. Which is your last new year, yeah. Uh, uh, it's this I guy here. Oh, is it? Yep, cool. Great. Uh, over to you, Jeremy. Anything right. you'd like to do? Uh, don't have a glory token Languishing yet. in no glory land so, over there. Not right. yet. So, uh, and Brian, back to you. Anything you'd like to do? Power phase? No? no. Double pass? All right, Jeremy, it's your third turn. All right. So, uh, this, let's see. You got one, two, three, or one, two, three, four. Either one. So, You're desperate to kill that leader, aren't you? I am, I am. <laughs> so which guy? So this is... Yeah. Karsis. This is Karsis the Chained. And He's got an attack that does two damage in yep. combat or one from range. He's only got one die and one damage left to take. Yeah. So and then this is uh That's Targor, Targor who is uh, this guy over here. And yeah, they're both two die. Oh, but this guy swings with three die, so I will charge in with him. One, two, three. Cool. You can um, it's, he only needs to do one damage to the leader to to kill him. True, but if I'm adjacent I get the support absolutely, bonus. Yeah, absolutely right. Okay. So uh, go for it. So All you've right. got um, three attacks requiring swords or a single support. Alright. Go for it. Here we go. Uh, it's it's two successes. Uh, so you might think I've only got one uh, shield die. Well, you've got two shield dice. He's, go for it. You need shields or criticals. Shield A single guarded. critical yeah. will wipe out all non-critical attacks. Not good enough though. Uh, it's, well, it's, it is good enough. It's not critical, but two shields block okay. two swords. So no damage goes through. And that's the end. So the double support only counts if I had two people. If you right? had another miniature, like, uh, right here, yeah. you would have had the double support action, okay. but no, you don't. So I charged with him, so he's tapped out. But yeah, that's right. I'll um, get you next turn. One of these days. <laughs> <laughs> it's your power face, Jeremy. What do you want to do? Um, I still got nothing, because they both need okay, glory. Over there, so. anything you want to do? Uh, no. No? Great. Uh, Brian, it's your last activation. Oh. I am going to charge attack. Excellent. And grab right shield. So, one, two... Of course, you are. Uh, if you if you landed on this space here, that's you'd true. be getting the objective five at the end of the turn, and you can oh, still smack yeah. him. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Great, cool. So she's going to attack. Point in the right maybe here. here. Yeah, right to him. Okay. So Angarad has uh, three attacks, needing the hammer results on her dice. She's also going to have the support from Severus Steelheart here as well. So a hammer, a critical, or a single support. Ooh. So one critical gets through. Uh, you have a chance to save yourself, Jeremy. You need one critical defense. I got this. Failed. No. A dodge is not good enough to defeat a crit. So uh, the damage goes through. Angrad does two damage. So place two damage to uh, cut tokens on uh, Bloody Tsex card. He's still alive. He's now still he's alive. Extra just about. All right. Uh, and that's uh, charge hurt done. Okay. Uh, and so have your power phase. Anything you want to do? No. Anything you want to do in the power phase? No. No. It's time for your turn, Jeremy. All right. One, two, three. Going in for the killing blow here. And we have double support. <laughs> oh wow, who's he going for? Severin. I'm yep. glad he's going. Uh, so that is Arnulf, yep. uh, who is over here. He has two attacks requiring a sword. Okay. Or criticals, or single support, or double support. The only thing that fails is a hammer. Alright. I think I double think I can hammer. Double hammer, here wow. it comes. <laughs> Uh, so it's a double success. Um, so over here, Severin rolls two dice. He needs to roll shields. No more shields. Uh, or dodges. Yeah. Or crits. All right. right. So uh. the shield gets uh, blocks one off. 
the double support you've only got uh, against here you've only got one support so that one doesn't work so right. the damage goes through uh, Targor does uh, one damage that's uh, Arnold sorry just one damage here uh, but unfortunately I fear that is enough to kill your leader so Severus Steelheart falls in battle dead excellent work uh, straight away Jeremy you earn the glory point for that there we go Kraken and uh, we go on to the power phase uh, now in the power phase you can use any of your glory points uh, you can use your glory points use any of those you're, it's always think worth doing because you're about to redraw your hand yeah. up so it might be worth spending one okay so this looks like a weapon I can equip onto somebody that's right, right yeah onto Arnold alright so I'll go with that so I'll flip that over he gets cool. a no new weapon so he swings with three dice and does two damage now uh, which is quite cool. So that's uh, that's the same as his normal axe, but the difference is if you roll at least one critical attack, this action has cleave. The cleave special rule means that no matter how, no shields work during that attack. Nice. So if you had rolled a critical and a success, and you'd rolled a, um, a critical to beat that one and a shield to beat that one, the shield doesn't work. That one goes through. That's the power face done. Brian, it's onto your uh, power. Anything you'd like to do? This is important. I want to keep that. I don't it think is good. There's okay, no worries. So there's no power. And now we've reached the, uh, anything you want to do over there? Uh, no. So we've reached the end phase, uh, and here we go. In the end phase, first of all, we look at any cards to see if you've scored any objectives. So anything that says look in the end phase and score it now, you score the glory now. So over here, Brian, you're holding objective five. Yep. So discard that, earn one glory. Slayer of Tyrants, you have killed his leader in the preceding phase. So discard that, earn a glory. Hold objective one, and it's here, you've not got that, so not this time. Corn cares not, scores in an end phase if five or more models are out of action. No, not quite yet. Uh, score this immediately if an enemy fighter begins a move action adjacent to one of your fighters and ends it next to none of your fighters. Basically, yeah. if he runs away, score yeah. that one. <laughs> I didn't do that. Uh, and hold objective one as well, you haven't got either. Oh, yeah. So, uh, no over there. But now, you have a chance, if you want to, to just discard any cards. You can discard anything you like you've got in front of you and we'll redraw up to your normal hand. So any objectives you don't like or any cards for guys that might be dead yep. or, or upgrades you don't think you're going to get to use, discard them now, keep the ones you want to keep. Okay. And now redraw your hand back up to three objectives and five power. Next thing we do is take all the tokens off the board, all the charge tokens, all the guard tokens go away and all the models are reactivated. Okay. And we reflip the activation tokens back over, ready for the next turn. So let's start turn two. Once again, at the start of the turn, you guys both roll four dice each to see which one of you gets to go first. Okay. Go for it. Uh, no criticals there. Brian's rolled the critical. So in the second turn, it'll be your activation first, and you'll go away. Yes. Right, at that point, guys, you pretty much don't need me anymore, so uh, I'm going to step out of the table and let you carry on. All the rules you've been explained, it's pretty much everything in the game there is. Um, okay. The real joy of this game comes with the customization of the decks. Yeah. Uh, so, Obviously, um, if you're a corn player and you really fancy running forward and smashing your face in, um, you take out the hold objective cards yeah. and you put, put, put in more kill people cards. Yeah. If you're a Stormcast Eternal player, you might do the complete opposite and hold back. Yeah. Even the board tiles themselves uh, are customizable and interchangeable. When you come to play a game, you choose the board tile you want to use, they're reversible, and you place it the way round you want. Awesome. It doesn't have to be like this also. You can place board tiles like this, oh, and cool. so on and so forth, as long as the hexes match up. The little white squares here are where the models must set up. So if you're playing on being a defensive Stormcast Eternal player, maybe you want to have this board tile here and have the three ones at the back where you start. Yep. If you're the corn player, you might turn that board round and have them at the front so they're more further boards. Gotcha. Uh, there's loads of uh, extra cards in the box game. We've got uh, the, the game comes with two starter decks we've used and it comes with loads more extra cards as well. Cool. Uh, and there will be other expansions coming out in the future with models and cards too. We've already announced the Death Battle Skeletons, which are pretty cool. Oh, cool. Uh, and there'll be more coming soon. The, uh, a quick question. Yeah. The, uh, the, the decks that you make, yeah. are they, they point-based? Are like some cards more important than others, or do you just need to have this many cards in the deck? You have to have at least 20 power cards with no more ploys than, uh, than uh, upgrades. You have to have the same number. Oh, okay. okay. You, ca you have to have, bang on, 15 objectives. Okay. Other than that, you can have whatever you like in this card. Oh, now, with this, with the power deck, you could have 100 cards if you wanted to, but of course, you have less uh, yeah. uh, power over what you have in your deck. Right. Okay. Um, that's it. It looks like at the end of turn one, uh, that Brian, you've scored three glory, yeah. and Jeremy, you've scored one. If we were to finish the game here, uh, you're the winner. In that case, 
It's a 3 1 victory to the Stormcast Turtles. Uh, shake hands, guys, very important. There you go. Good work. Good work. Uh, caught that game there. That's Shakespeare, guys. Thank you very much. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so that was Shadespire from Games Workshop. I gotta be honest with you guys, watching you play that, I am very excited. That yeah. looked really cool. Yeah, it's super cool. I like how it's asymmetrical combat too, you know. Um, like, I had five units, he only had three, but his were way tankier. It took me, what, three guys to kill one of yours? Yeah. Um, that, that was pretty awesome. Yeah, the, the thing that uh, kind of sets it apart from the other kinds of uh, games where it's one-on-one -on -one combat with miniatures is the deck you get to build, and it, it's, you have a whole phase where you just play these cards and that can change everything. I thought I had your guy down, you had like two health yeah. left, one health left, yeah. and then you were able to heal. Yeah, yeah. You know, that changes everything. Not being able, only being able to move attack once, Yeah. That, that's huge. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, you can either do a full charge, which is a move and attack in one action, or you can move one turn, wait, and then attack twice or three times. With, like if you have one really strong guy, you can yeah. risk it by saving up a couple attacks. Um, or you can just go all out, move an attack, but then he's done for that round. I mean, you can bring him back next round, but you have to refresh the round. That's a cool activation system. I like that yeah. a lot. Yeah. There's a neat thing, too. We didn't get to see too much because there's never uh, three uh, enemies dead. Yeah. There are anyone dead at one time for you. Yeah. But there's a uh, there's little, what they call inspirations on all the character cards, and if you meet that, you flip them over. That's so cool. So yeah. mine, mine basically got, like, you know, oh, last stand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you're awesome. gonna go, you, you got, like, an extra attack, a special ability, and more armor. Yeah, uh, that's pretty awesome. Um, I did get to equip, which was cool. I equipped a weapon for my guy, so it increased my attack. It increased how many die I rolled, how much damage it did, and the special effect if you get a crit. So it's just really cool. Like the further you progress, you start off with the basic guys, and they get either stronger by flipping over. You equip them with stuff. You equip the spell, right? Lightning, uh, lightning, oh, yeah. blast. lightning blast. Yeah. yeah. And I like that he meant the the deck construction aspect. Yeah. It's like you can have as much as you want in that deck. Like build your deck out how you want. Like take out like certain objectives that yeah. you just you know you're not gonna be yeah. going for. If you're just going you know. for killing everybody then go for it. Yeah. Dude, I, I really I think they've got like they're going for that board game, more of a board game feel for this. So like first of all the minis are gorgeous, the game yeah. workshop minis. Oh, they're super easy to assemble. Like they come in just a couple pieces each. Yeah. Uh, they're pretty colored so you can just jump in and start playing immediately. That's yep. that's awesome. Like that's yeah. the barrier to entry is very, very low. You can just build yep. these up and start playing like right away. And uh, but there's also a lot of crunch it seems yeah. like talking about moving the maps around, customizing yeah. how you lay out the maps. Like the way, I mean, the deck configuration, yeah. like there's just, there's a ton going on. And, you know, adding new factions to the game. Yeah. And like that's, that's so cool. Yeah, you start with just two basic factions, then you can, uh, they only have one announced so far, but I'm sure they'll release more as it goes. And you can pick the faction you like, what's, what you think is cool is. Um, um, but yeah, it, it looks pretty awesome. Yeah, really excited about this. Uh, very much looking forward to it. They're saying a potentially November release, so keep an eye out for this, definitely.